Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Design Cinema. This is Feng Zhu speaking and we are at episode 103, How to Design for Beginners. So I thought I'd push one more episode out before the end of 2019 and we're just a few days away from Christmas so I thought it would be a pretty fun time since a lot of you will be on vacation soon. Let's do an episode in which we could totally relax and just talk about design, something I haven't uh, discussed in quite a while. And notice on the bottom, I threw in a little Star Wars Holiday Special logo on the bottom because this week is also the last, uh, I guess, the last uh, movie of Star Wars called The Rise of Skywalker. So it'd be kind of cool to uh, maybe do a little bit of Star Wars theme in this design package and use it as an example to, uh, to illustrate this, uh, this episode. Anyways, let's jump in here and talk about uh, what I will be discussing. So how to design obviously is a really big term. This is something that you could go on endlessly to discuss, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to just go through a uh, kind of a demo project, walk you guys through it like what a professional would do, and hopefully you will learn the design process. Well, let's go to our first slide, okay? So by the way, this episode will probably run a little bit long. I'm guessing somewhere at least an hour to hour and 20 minutes, perhaps more. So sit back, relax, get your coffee, iced tea, dessert, ice cream, whatever it is you're doing, and let's, uh, let's, uh, let's join this episode and get it started. All right, so here's what I'll talk about. Work like a pro, okay? So obviously we teach a lot of students here. I also work with a lot of amateur artists and see a lot of their work. And something I notice a lot is the kind of skipping of the design phase. Uh, a lot of younger students tend to pick an IP, like for example, they want to work on uh, Blizzard games or work on Star Wars or work on Star Trek, whatever it is. And they tend to just start drawing. They skip a lot of the design thinking that was important in the creation of these IPs. To, in order to design for these particular products, we have to understand what the influences were when the creators first made the product. So today we're gonna to be obviously using Star Wars and another IP to illustrate this point, okay? It's okay to be a big fan of a game or a film and design for them, but we also don't wanna do fan art. What we wanna do is imagine you work for these products or these uh, companies and you're asked to design something new for them, but adopt it to their IP they already have. And this is the stuff we'll be talking about here in the middle, right? This episode will be dealing with these three things. So the first one is understand the design influences from the creator's point of view. So we're not just gonna grab random reference images or just grab random things or start drawing randomly. That is the case in a lot of junior designers or even students or just uh, amateurs trying to learn on their own. They tend to just skip all of this and just draw by luck, design by luck. And for example, they might wanna draw a Star Wars ship They'll draw a ship that looks too Terran. It looks like something that belongs in Alien, but they'll just stop a logo and say this belongs in Star Wars. For any professionals or art directors reviewing this work, when we see that, we just, under we just know that, okay, you really don't understand what design really is. You're just kind of randomly designing and calling it whatever it is, okay? If you want to adopt to a particular IP, you have to understand the influences that created it. For example, if you threw TIE Fighters into Star Trek, they'll look really out of place. Okay, and for someone who is not a designer, they might know not they blah, they might not know why, but they will feel like this doesn't look right, right? Like imagine a Tie Fighter attacking the Enterprise looks pretty strange, and if you reverse it, it'll probably look strange too. Imagine the Enterprise attacking the Death Star flanked by a couple of X-wing fighters, that probably looks pretty weird too. So why is that, right? The reason for that is because the design language is used on these particular spaceships they have different creative perspectives for how these ships were, were designed, right? The Enterprise uses one set of rules, the Millennium Falcon, the X-Wing, the TIE Fighter, they use a different set of rules. And that's what makes these IPs stand out and differentiate them between each other. And this is just something that students tend not to think about. So their spaceships tend to come out generic and it doesn't fit into anybody except for genericness. Like they all kind of look like a Terran thing, like very militarized. It doesn't go into Star Wars, it doesn't go into Star Trek, and that's what we try to uh, talk about today. The second one, okay, let me slow down a bit. Uh, I'm actually not on coffee right now, but I'm so used to talking fast, but let me take a sip of tea here and slow myself down. All right, second thing. Put together design boards with the similar influences. So first, we're gonna figure out what influenced them, and second, we're gonna put together our own design boards based on those uh, influences. Let me go here on the layer here, okay? And lastly, we're gonna sketch and experiment and try things and have fun 
but based on the two things we have already established, okay? Because most students, again, they jump from, oh, let me go here again. Okay, they jump from here directly to here, to here. They skip this here. So the drawings and the designs generally come from pure luck. Like draw something that looks kind of fun, looks like a cool shape, and then call that, call that the design that fit the IP. That does work if you're just kind of drawing randomly, like you're just doing random concept art for the sake of practicing or having fun. But that's something you cannot do if you're working for a studio, and that brings us to the next slide. Okay, what we're, what we're gonna do today is really pretend, imagine that your favorite anime company or video game company or film company came to you literally today and said they're gonna offer you a two week uh, in-house position to design for the next project based on their previous IP and you have two weeks to prove yourself. Imagine that really happened, right? Imagine like I used to do that when I was in art school. I imagine like Squaresoft or something or came to the school and picked a couple of students out to go to Japan and work for Squaresoft. What would you do, right? You're not gonna waste the two weeks away. You're not gonna just like do nothing. Now, obviously you get fired. You also cannot just straight up draw fan art, right? If you go to Lucasfilm, you can't just draw an X-Wing and put on the table and show the director like, here, here's my X-Wing, right? That's not your job. Your job is to adopt to the IP they already have and design something new, okay? So today we're gonna to totally play pretend, okay? Pretend just got hired by this production company. Pick one that you like, okay? It doesn't matter because it changes the mindset. If you're just designing randomly on your own, you don't have these restrictions. And that's what something like, a, uh, like someone practicing on their own tend to do. Their concept bar doesn't have a goal. The only goal it has is to produce something that looks kind of cool, but it doesn't belong to anything. So if you're practicing, give yourself this restriction. So today we're using other people's IPs. Later, like in my previous episodes, you can give yourself restrictions. For example, what kind of product you're doing? Is it a medieval, is it historic? Those are all, certain forms of restriction. But if you look at concept art as a whole, especially coming from amateurs, most designs don't, don't tend to have any kind of restrictions, kind of like space towers or random spaceship, alien planets, characters that look like they're derivative of elves or works, right? These restrictions are not good enough. They're not enough for you to train to, uh, for your design thinking part, okay? So anyways, let's jump back to the slides here. So you'll be tasked with designing characters, vehicles, environments, belonging to the same world at these as these companies have already made. So I picked two companies here. So on the left here is Sunrise. So they're based in Japan and they've created a lot of cool shows, a lot of animes like Gundam, uh, and the one we're gonna be talking about today, I'll show you in a second here. And on the right here is Skywalker Ranch, which I actually did work at for over a year and a half on the uh, previous Star Wars films. So this is a pretty magical place. We worked on the uh, third floor up here. So this is the art department as well as the previous animatics. They were up there on the third floor. On the second floor was George Lucas's office. And on the first floor was the cafeteria as well as one of the best libraries or personal library you've ever seen. So you could Google this on, uh, check out the Skywalker Ranch library and you will see this beautiful Art Nouveau Victorian library, it's huge. And uh, the cool thing is as a concept, des concept designer, we have full access to this library. Uh, it's got thousands and thousands of books. Many of them are really rare. So it's pretty cool. So we worked up here to design Star Wars. So this was used, I believe, for probably Return of the Jedi and many of the Indiana Jones films that were designed here, as well as the, I think, Phantom Menace and uh, Attack of the Clones, as well as Return of the Sith. Uh, they were all, it's not Return of the Sith, Revenge of the Sith, sorry. So those were done here at Skywalker Ranch. And after those films were done, uh, pr production moved over to Big Rock as well as IOM in Presidio, San Francisco. So I don't know what they do here now. I don't know what they do at Skywalker Ranch, so I'm not too sure. But this is definitely one of the, cre uh, one of the most creative spaces I've ever worked at because George created the space away from all the... Uh, I guess the, the the pipeline of production, like producers, directors, everybody, right? So it's a very serene place. It's surrounded by just green hills and we're away from everybody. Um, it's a pretty magical place. But uh, anyways, let's pretend that you are hired to work here. We'll work here for two weeks. And what are we gonna be doing is this, okay? So on the left here is Cowboy Bebop. So this is one of those uh, IPs created by Sunrise. And this uh, anime came out in the late 90s just when I was getting out of design school and I was absolutely addicted to Cowboy Bebop. I loved everything about this show. I loved the characters. I loved what their story is about. 
Uh, I love all the designs for it. And uh, so I was quite addicted. I think it came out in a, on a Cartoon Network or Adult Swim, uh, some, one of those shows. So for those who haven't seen it, so this is our lead character here. And we are tasked today to design a new spaceship for him. Okay, his name is Spike. So we're going to design a ship for him. And over here on the uh, right side is the 1977 Star Wars. And we're tasked to design a Rebel Starfighter for the 1977 version of Star Wars. So that's pretty important to mention because now there's a bunch of new Star Wars films like Rise of Skywalker and uh, what's, it, what's the last one called? The Return of the... I can't remember what they're called. There's so many of them. So, and the design languages tend to kind of start to kind of uh, get pretty wild because there's so many new things introduced into it. So what I want to do today is let's just focus on the 1977 version. So pretty amazing, 2019, 1977, that's what, how, how old is IP? 2019 plus 2, 42 years old IP, pretty crazy. So anyways, we'll be designing a Rebel Starfighter for the 1977 version of Star Wars. All right, so the, uh, let's jump in, okay? First step, let's examine what this IP currently has, right? Imagine this is our first day of the job. We're sitting down here at Sunrise in Japan, and we're tasked to design a new spaceship for Spike for Cowboy Bebop, all right? Say a the Cowboy Bebop 2 or whatever they're doing, or what the movie, all right? They already made a movie, but let's say they're gonna do another one for 2021 or something, okay? Oh, so we're going to look at their existing products. So here is the Swordfish 2, uh, dri driven by Spike. Here's our, our lead character here. So let's take a look here, all right? And try to start to get into what is this ship about? What are the design languages? What are the words that come to mind when you look at it? And let's just take a look, right? I'm seeing a lot of animated parts. I'm seeing a lot of moving parts here. I'm seeing a little sphere, you can see here, that gets... Uh, put inside this little ship here. So these are pretty important things. And it also looks like he's uh, controlling this thing almost like a motorcycle, right? Looks looks at the throttles on left and right here. That is definitely a motorcycle way of operating versus say a aircraft in which you have a yoke or a joystick. This is a motorcycle influence. So what does that mean? Okay, that's pretty important. That means this craft is meant to be speedy, to be pretty aggressive. Right, it's a, it's a nimble little thing because that's what motorcycles do. So they obviously want this little spaceship to move like a motorcycle. It's a very nimble little fast little spaceship, right? That's important. And something else I wanna mention here is when you're grabbing client references, you don't need a lot. I've seen students fill pages like this with the hundreds of references from the IP. But if you're, partic if you're tasked with a particular uh, goal, for example, a ship, you don't need to have hundreds and hundreds of references. The reason for that is because we're not doing an add-on. We're not taking this ship and just making a bigger engine on it or putting a bigger gun on it. You tend to see that a lot with fan art based designs in which they're retaining the original design and just doing some kind of add-on or some kind of variation. But that's not what the client wants. They don't want a variation. They want a new ship, but capture the design language and the feeling of their IP, right? So obviously we're not doing a TIE fighter, we're not doing an X-Wing, we're doing a jet or some kind of spaceship that belongs to Cowboy Bebop, okay? So here are the references, and we'll come back to this in a second here. This is uh, another good character in the show, right? On the same side of Spike. So this is Faze's ship. So her little ship looks like a half of a mech or something that's missing the torso. But notice it also has this kind of spherical thing attached to it, right? They share a common cockpit design also a motorcycle driven mechanism. But her ship is not as slick, but it does share some similar design languages. Uh, and something you notice here, right? The control column is exactly the same as Spike's control column. Okay, they're the exact same design, this kind of motorcycle thing. And next one we're gonna look at is the concept art. So nowadays you can pretty much dig up everything from the internet. So it's pretty easy to dig up the concept art done for this show. So let's analyze this for a second. Let me get my pen here. So this show came out in 1998. That means the pre-production for this show came out, was uh, underway probably as early as 1994, possibly 95. So we gotta start to think, okay, 1995, what were the design influences that made this IP? Because that's important to recognize. Okay, we cannot think with today's mind. Uh, and that's something that, again, students fall into. They're using design influences from 2019, 2018, like things they see on ArtStation and so forth, and they're adopting that new language into something that was made a long time ago. Now, that might work in certain cases, but it's very easy for students, right? For professionals, they know how to control the level of 
new, let's say, quote unquote, new influences into a old IP. But for students, they tend to go towards the new. So designs look like this. Nothing from the 1990s. It looks like something that came out in 2019 because of the new influences. For example, Iron Man is new, right? The kind of the Transformer stuff, right? That's all new stuff. And you start to put that stuff in the old IPs, it sometimes can look out of place, okay? So we've got to examine what this IP was about when it was created. And it's also important to look at the creators, right? In this case, this is a concept designer for this show. So at the time he made this, his childhood took place somewhere in the late 70s and early 80s. So during that time, what were the things that's influencing this particular designer? And again, I'm only guessing here. I don't know. I don't I haven't talked to him. I don't know exactly what the influences are, but we could take an educated guess. And that educated guess is going to help us get into the same mindset as this designer when we design the new ship. So I hope that's making sense here, right? So we don't just start out random. We're going to start with a goal. Okay, so for, let's analyze this. So in the late 70s, early 80s, something that was dominating the market was a lot of cartoons, animes, and toys. Toys in particular was uh, really hot in the 80s, right? I grew up in the same time period. And the toys back then contained a ton of animated parts. This also has to do with shows like Transformers, right? That also spawned Robotech and uh, uh, Gundam and all these uh, shows. Really, it was about selling these toys. The cartoons were a commercial to sell all these products. So animated parts or moving parts on these toys was pretty important. I remember buying these things in the 80s and you could like, you know, uh, turn them, twist them, do all sorts of stuff because that makes it fun. And this little spaceship here has a lot of toy parts. Look at the gun, right? A huge gun that rotates looks like about 180 360 degree uh, rotation you have this engine thing that also rotates up and down reminds me of a harrier jet uh, uh, and then let's look at other influences this designer most likely also looked at a lot of retro cars and world war ii i get that by looking at this shape here this is the light from the uh the, the ship so this way of cutting glass on the headlight is very retro, right? This kind of uh, segment and glass cutting. So this is no longer used that much, well, not in this particular style anymore, but it was used in the, you know, probably early as 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, up to that, was using this kind of cut. And also this conical shape is also very retro, something that's not used as much these days. Now let's continue exploring. This ball shape design, I'm pretty sure the influence behind this is the uh, B-17 ball turret that we'll get to in a second here, right? That's probably part of that. Also, you look at the restrict, uh, the wheel well that goes into the wings here. This undercarriage design is also very World War II, like the Mustangs and the, 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 uh, the, all the Corsairs and all the airplanes tend to have this huge undercarriage to clear the propellers, right? So they tend to come out, they're very long, they extend out. So something you see here. So modern jets have this as well, but this type of look in which the part of the panel and the wheels Pretty World War II. Now, only guessing here, but I'm guessing that that's what the influences for this particular concept art was. Okay. Now, sorry, let me take a T here. Now, using this concept art and the uh, client's previous designs, what I generally do is I like to narrow those forms down into five key words. And you could give this a try as well. Pick your favorite IP. Now, don't pick the whole thing, okay? Pick the IP, pick something you want to do. Say a character, a ship, an environment, whatever, a prop, a gun, whatever it is. Try to uh, streamline down to five keywords that describes this IP. So the words I've chosen for this particular Cowboy Bebop spaceship, okay? Not the world, not the characters, not the costume, just the spaceship. I narrowed it down to these five words. And we're going to be talking about these five words individually because just by naming a word is not good enough. You have to understand what this word represent because later as we start to design, we have to work these words into your new design. So we don't run to the case of TIE fighters showing up in Star Trek or Star Trek showing up in Star Wars because each of these IPs have their own words. So design is a language and this essentially is the design language we'll be using to communicate this design to the viewers. So it's very important to have these words that adopt to only this IP. So the later when we look at Star Wars, these words shouldn't apply because then you're doing something wrong, right? Because now your IP is getting kind of into the gray areas. Like, and that's where you get the generic stuff in which the, the, the ship doesn't belong to anybody, okay? So the five words, look at, let's look at it. Streamlined, retro, whimsical, cool, animalistic. 
So let's break each one of these down. I'm on the right layer here. Okay, good. Streamline in this case is lines that are accelerated. Okay, so a line that goes straight and start to get speed. That's an accelerated curve or accelerated line. So a lot of sports cars have this, airplanes have this, a lot of animals have this. So basically anything that kind of goes through some kind of volume like air or water tend to take on a streamlined design because it makes it more aerodynamic. And a streamlined design then will get into this form. And that's something you're seeing a lot on the client's design of the swordfish, right? So this swordfish uh, spaceship here has a lot of streamlining. So that's why I chose that word. That means our design also needs to have streamlined uh, designs and forms and lines in it. Next, retro. Retro is a very big word, right? Retro could mean a lot of things. But in this case, I just mean things that probably came in the 40s and the 50s. These type of time period, we're using lines and curves are no longer used today. So we try to work that. We don't have to include a lot of it, but we want to put a little bit of it. So in the original design of the swordfish, what I see retro is in the low lights here, right? I see a little bit of the handle. I see the, these curves. These are kind of retro, kind of like an old sports car. And so I chose that word. Next, whimsical. Okay, Whimsical is a little tough word here, but I think when I think of this word, whimsical means it's playful, kind of like a toy, like something that can move, that can animate. It's something that comes alive. And I want this vehicle to feel whimsical. And the original ship definitely had a little bit of whimsical in it. It looks fun to... Uh, play around with, right? Like a motorcycle, it just goes around, there's a lot of things moving on it. It just looks fun. Uh, and the reason why I chose, uh, by the way, I chose uh, Cowboy Bebop is to create a perfect contrast to Star Wars, which we'll get to in a second, okay? Next word, cool, okay? So cool is another big giant word that can mean a bunch of things. But in this case, whoa, what did I do here? I just deleted some stuff here. In this case, cool just means when you look at it, the first thing that comes to your mind is, man, that's pretty cool. Okay, like a nice sports car is cool. A, uh, a watch could be cool, right? The first reaction should be, man, that's cool. If you could capture that, then we're doing something right, okay? And that's pretty hard. Capturing the word cool is pretty difficult. But when I look at this ship here, it just looks pretty cool. Like, uh, you look at it, like something, you know, just really quickly what comes to your mind, like, that's cool. Good, that's what we want to capture in this design, okay? All right, let's keep going here. Last word here is animalistic. So animalistic uh, generally means that this design has some kind of face or kind of some kind of feature that reminds you of an animal and the let's go back to the ship here sorry for going back and forth here but uh, just imagine you're in a classroom okay this is the way i teach as well so uh, this is not a very slickly produced show here it's just a classroom environment anyways so when i look at this thing this thing takes on a lot of animal forms and some of the ways uh, these animalistic characters comes out is generally from the eyes, right? So you look at here, these are headlights, but headlights generally take on an eye look to it. So a lot of cars have this kind of feature, like a lot of cars have aggressiveness to them. For example, like BMWs tend to look very aggressive. They look mean. Like right now, I go to Google and just type BMW and go to image. You see that most of the cars look mean. They look like they're angry at you, right? That's the animalistic nature of BMWs. But now type in Porsche. Porsche tends to look kind of cute. They have big eyes, you know, they have bubbly eyes. They look kind of friendly, right? And that's kind of an animalistic feature. And to get that, the easiest way to get that is by putting little eyes on it, right? So in this case, the headlights. So you also have these kind of like wings, it's like a little bird, little hummingbird thing. So it's named a swordfish, which is also an animal. So I'm not sure if that's what the creator wanted to do with this thing, but it could be because of the gun. But whatever this is, I think the word animalistic applies to this IP. Okay, so that's why I have these five words. So based on these five words, let's look at some references that are possibly influences for Cowboy Bebop. Point. Okay. So again, I'm guessing here. I have no idea this is what the creators use because uh, I'm not in the art department. But if I was there on day one working, I'll get these references as my best educated guess of what uh, the designers are using. So let's uh, take a quick look here. So I put James Dean here because to me, James Dean is a perfect representation of Spike, the lead character in this show. They might have reference James Dean for the character. Pretty similar. Look at the way his, uh, his over, his clothes is kind of loose on him. He's got the cigarette dangling. But we're not designing a character, so we don't have to worry about this for now. But put it here just to remind us who is using this vehicle. Okay, so here's the undercarriage from a World War II airplane that looks like, uh, I think that might be a Corsair. Yeah, it has a Corsair using the, the wing here. All right, so you can see the undercarriage. It's also a motorcycle, so I put the motorcycle here. Here's the gun pod we talked about earlier from the B-17. 
So the driving mechanism, the pod, looks like there's a lot of influences coming from here. So they just put a motorcycle control column inside this thing, inside of a weapon. A couple of animals. This aircraft here, the, down here, that actually reminds me of a little hummingbird for some reason. So I put a hummingbird here to get that animalistic feature. And then look at the cars here, right? This is a uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful Corvette right here. Look at that, look at that form. And the thing to remind you here is that these designs here should have the same keywords that we just talked about. So let's take a look, right? So if you look at the uh, Corvette, this red Corvette here, is it streamlined? Yes. Is it retro? Obviously. Is it whimsical? Yes, it looks quite whimsical, it looks playful, right? Is it cool? Whoops, that's Star Wars already. Is it cool? Yes, that's a very cool looking vehicle. And last one is the animalistic. Yes, it's got eyeballs, it's got a mouth right here, right? This is the same type of design language that this craft should have, right? So beautiful. Let's look at here. This is a MG, MGA, really cool sports car out of uh, Great Britain. Uh, beautiful, same thing, right? It's retro, it's streamlined, it's animalistic, it is cool, right? It's retro. And then let's look at the, whoa, too much zooming. Let's look at the plane here. So this is the F4U Corsair. So a uh, late fighter and bomber that entered World War II pretty late. I think 1944, 45, somewhere around that time. So you start to get pretty advanced lines in there. So look at the kind of the gull wing that goes down here. And the reason why I picked this plane as a reference here is because look at the way, right? Here's the plane. Here's the uh, Swordfish 2. Look at the way the wings fold, the undercarriage very very similar here so i'll be pretty surprised if designers did not look at the corsair when they were designing the uh the spaceship here right so this is our reverse engineer version of the references they possibly looked at when they're designing the ship back in the uh, mid 90s all right should we take a break here uh, maybe not let's go through this all right next star wars ba -ba -ba -ba. okay 1977 all right so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna look at the existing existing products break down its uh references and come up with the keywords and then use that to find our new references okay so star wars so first one here is the y-wing starfighter so this actually is my favorite spaceship not the favorite spaceship but the favorite rebel spaceship my all-time favorite spaceship from star wars is actually the slave one uh, by Boba Fett, all right? So uh, designed by Nito Rodis back in uh, 76. So anyways, this uh, is my favorite starfighter from the Rebel side, the Y-Wing. So I remember getting this toy in the 80s and just absolutely loved everything about it. So immediately, we can see that this ship here is a complete different design language from Cowboy Bebop. And that's why I use Cowboy Bebop. We want to se uh, separate these two design languages so you can learn, right? If you're designing something that doesn't have this strong characteristic, then you're still kind of randomly designing. You're designing by luck, okay? Give it to yourself, give yourself a challenge. Perhaps you could do this uh, during the break, right? Design a new uh, Star Wars ship or a Cowboy Bebop and try to learn this, okay? So what makes this different? Well, we'll get to that when we get to the keywords, but there's something very different about this than the Cowboy Bebop one, right? Let's continue looking. Now we have the X-Wing, right? All-time favor for most Star Wars fans, mine as well. But uh, the Y-Wing for me takes the uh, the upper hand here in terms of which one's cooler. So uh, pretty cool plane here, very iconic. And also this will not fit into Cowboy Bebop. Imagine putting Spike flying this. It just looks out of place. Or putting Captain uh, Picard here, right? Or some Star Trek. Uh, it doesn't fit, right? Or putting Klingons in here. And that's what design language is all about. Uh, speaking French, speaking English, speaking German, speaking Chinese, speaking uh, Japanese, right? They're all different languages and design works exactly the same way. You cannot just intermix them. When you intermix, it becomes kind of like a generic gibberish. And generic gibberish, again, happens to be what a lot of students tend to do when they're designing. So for a professional, when you look at that, it's just like you're mixing Japanese with some German, with some French, or some English. You look at that, okay, uh, you kind of know a bit of something, but there's not nothing you know uh, very strong here. And that's why it's hard to find a job if you're designing the kind of generic spoken languages, right? Or very basic design languages. For example, you're saying, I am cat or I like cat, you know, this kind of stuff. It's too simple. You are doing the right thing, but it's too simple. So, but that's still better than gibberish. Okay, gibberish design is something we tend to see a lot from students who are, or amateurs who are not trained in design. They tend to come up with gibberish design, which is like a kid, kid bash, a bash of everything. Right. So anyways, let's not give our focus here. Here's the X-Wing. Okay. And here are the concept art from back in the day. So this is done by Joe Johnston. 
in 1977, but not done in 1977 because pre-production for Star Wars probably started, I'm guessing probably 75, 76, probably earlier than that, could be even 74. So let's look at the influences for these guys in 74. That means Joe Johnson grew up, his childhood is probably in the 60s and the 50s. The creator, George Lucas, also grew up in a very similar time period. And the things that are influencing them were down here, right? George Lucas made American Graffiti, which featured, featured a lot of sports cars. So obviously he likes uh, old classic sports cars. He also was influenced heavily by World War II and the film Seven Samurai. Now, these are just some of the influences, by the way. There's a lot more. But even when I worked on Star Wars, we're looking at some of the early, early edits uh, for the film. Not edit for Star Wars itself, but edit to get the timing and the feel. And George was using a lot of World War II footage to edit, for example, the uh, uh, Mustang banking. He'll replace that later with X-Wings banking, but to have a placeholder, he was actually editing in footage from World War II. So obviously that was a huge influence from him making the original Star Wars. And we want to capture the same vibe in this IP, right? And this is where the students get into trouble in which they're, for example, designing Star Wars, but they design something straight from Halo. You know, something that's so super new, the influences are from modern things and not from the uh, World War II. All right, so uh, that's what this, again, this episode is all about, okay? So now let's look at the Y wing here and the X wing here. What are the design influences that's shaping these, right? We talked about Seven Samurai, World War II. So let's look at the key words here. The five words I want to use for Star Wars are here. Utility, sturdy, beautifully ugly. I don't know what a word in English would be for this. So I just put, this is a cheat here, it's two words, but what I want to express here is beautifully ugly. And we'll go through these each in a second. It's powerful and it's professional. So let's run through these. Utility, okay. Utility means these spaceships is designed purely for a function. So just like World War II planes, that's all they did. It's either a fighter, it's a bomber, right? They kind of designed for mostly a singular purpose. They might have other things they could do, but most of them are designed with a singular purpose. So where it's a gun platform, like the A-10, or that's not World War II, let's go back to World War II. Okay, look at the, um, the Mustangs, right? They're designed to be a fighter. And then you have the B-17s, designed to be a bomber. But they tend not to do anything else besides that because they're a tool. They're a tool in the use of war. Very different than Spike's little aircraft here. Even though it has a gun, this thing looks like it could be could used for racing, it could be used for fun, right? The word utility doesn't apply to this aircraft here. It looks like it's for fun. It's very whimsical, and that's why we chose those words. You look at the Y-wing and the X-wing, they're just gun platforms. Their job is to go in and do something. That's why I use utility, right? It's a tool. It's a tool for war. And that's important to realize that we don't want to make this thing into a beautiful, awesome looking, cool thing because that's not what these things were designed to do in the first place, okay? Sturdy. Sturdy means looks like you could shoot this thing up, put a couple of holes on it, and probably nothing will happen, right? It's a, it's a very uh, military looking thing. You could uh, damage it a little bit, you could scratch it up. And even by the way they designed these in the films, you can see they're dirtied up, they're scratched up, they're pretty dented up. Uh, they're sturdy little things. Obviously when they get shot by a TIE fighter, they'll still blow up, right? But uh, they're still pretty sturdy. They're not as, uh, I guess, uh, 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 what am I looking for here, having the worst time here, not as a fragile, say, as a motorcycle, which is Spike's little spaceship. Okay, let's keep going here. Got sturdy. Beautiful, ugly. So this word here is pretty important because to me, the original Star Wars ships were all beautifully ugly. Like everything looked kind of off, everything looked kind of bizarre, but somehow as a whole, it looks really nice. And that to me is the definition of Star Wars ships. The thing is not so balanced, the thing is not so perfect. But you now let's look at the Y wing here, here, right? So it's got exposed parts here, it's got like exposed engines, it's got a sort of a, a closed up cockpit. Overall, it's not something you would say that's beautiful, but at the same time, it is beautiful. So that's, again, what I think Star Wars ships should be about. At the first glance, it's kind of bizarre. It doesn't follow stereotypes. It doesn't follow the Terran, you know, the kind of Halo spaceships and these kind of dropships that just has two engines. Uh, it has its own design language, very bizarre forms. The, you know, think about it, in the 1970s, to have something like this show up on the screen, was absolutely mind-blowing. You haven't seen things like this before. And we definitely want to capture this uh, as we go here. So I'm setting myself up for a huge thing here, right? Because we're talking about we got to make sure that our designs capture this as well and not do a generic uh, dropship. But anyways, we'll try our best. Okay, next is powerful. 
Okay, so powerful means again with military stuff, their engines are strong. These things are meant to go fast. They could take a lot of punish. So look at these spaceships. They all have huge engines on them. The X-wing has four engines. The Y-wing has two giant engines. That seems to be a pretty prominent design feature here. Versus the uh, the Cowboy Bebop, it's got an engine, but it's not a prominent thing. It's sort of in the back of the spaceship, and it's also been covered up with a lot of fins and stuff. So it's 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 there, but it's not a prominent design feature. It is hidden underneath it. Versus in Star Wars, it is shown. Okay, let's go back to Star Wars here, right? It's actually part of the form. It's very very important as part of design, and that makes the uh, craft feel very powerful. And the last word is professional. Okay, so this word I chose is like this. If you get onto a Ducati motorcycle, where's my references? Right, you could sort of learn to maneuver this pretty quickly, right? Learn how the throttle works and kind of take it for a spin. So I can imagine going inside the Swordfish 2 and just take it for a spin. Maybe you cannot land it, but you could probably take it for a spin, fly it around. It's not that difficult. But Star Wars ships to me are very, very professional. This is something you get in and you probably don't even know how to start it. It should be something that needs training. It right, needs a professional. You gotta go through month of training to learn how to take off, how to uh, control it, and so forth. So to me, Star Wars ship, just like a utility tool, it is functional and it is professional. Okay. So based on that, here are the references I think that influence Star Wars. So when I look at the Millennium Falcon, it totally reminds me of these B-17s going toward their target and being escorted by the little friends, like P-51s and Hurricanes and so forth. So the X-wing probably represented the P or the P-51 probably represented the X-Wings. And then look at this uh, P-38 Lightning here. That maybe represents the Y-Wing, right? It's got the two engines on left and right. The Mustang has a single engine. It's fast. It's a fighter. It's a front shooting platform, right? Pretty, pretty uh, slick vehicle here. And look at the uh, X-Wing there. So to me, World War II, Star Wars is World War II in space, right? So it's very powerful. Tons of engines being shown. And look down here, right? Uh, look at Luke here and the Leia. No, that's Luke as well. Uh, shooting from the Falcon and totally reminds me of the B-17 pot as well. So they also used just like Cowboy Bebop, the uh, gun ball. Uh, look at the copy here. So we're not designing the interior, but just putting this here because we're trying to get into the creator's mind, right? When they created the design for this cockpit for the Millennium Falcon, I'm pretty sure they're looking at this is the Henkel uh, uh, from World War II, a German bomber. Right? You saw this uh, in Dunkirk. Uh, the same plane. It's got twin engines. Anyways, look at the cockpit designs here with the uh, ball and the uh, the struts here. They're very, very similar. Here's the reverse shot. This is the same Hinkle uh, ship here, so our airplane. And you can look at this. It's very, very similar. Here's the cockpit of an X-Wing. Here's a cockpit of a German fighter. This looks like a BF-109, I think. It could be a um, it could be a 190. I'm not sure, but I think it's a BF-109. But look at the way the uh, the cockpit forms are. Very, very similar, right? The amount of glass and the uh, the beams, very similar here, the way the, the pilot sits in the middle, right? Same thing with the F-14. I'm pretty sure they're looking at uh, carrier aircrafts as well. Because remember, this is uh, uh, taking place in which America was coming out with these huge aircraft carriers, right, in the 70s. And look at the way these planes were stored. Very, very similar to the shot we saw earlier uh, of the hangar here, right? So, yeah, so that's the references I think they were looking at when creating Star Wars spaceships. All right, let me take one more T and we look at the references that I prepared. I think this is already going pretty long, huh? Uh, who cares? It's almost Christmas. You guys have plenty of time to, to watch this and take a break and so forth. So I'm trying to do, do these on cinemas as a classroom. So I'm not going to skip anything. I'm not going to try to fast forward anything. Let's just run through each one. If it takes a long time, it takes a long time. All right. <clears throat> Prepare design boards. The first one, Cowboy Bebop. Okay, so I've written the, uh, the keywords up here. Streamlined, retro, whimsical, cool, and animalistic. So I'm going to be designing a new ship, but here are the references that I'm starting to find, right? So look at these retro cars I found. They're pretty cool. They have these very slick forms, and I'll be using these to sort of design and sketch uh, the, uh, the initial phase. Right? Here's some of the fish that I found. So all these references here should contain these words, and that's something that's very important. So if you're doing this on your own, look at the references and see, do these references fall in line with those words? So just as a reminder, let's go back here. Let's take a look at the, uh, let's look at the spaceships. Let's look at the, uh, the Y-wing, right? The words that I picked for Cowboy Bebop shouldn't really apply to this, right? Look, look at the word, this is streamlined. 
this is sort of streamlined, but not really. Look at all the exposed parts, right? This thing looks like it's pretty clumsy. You know, it's fast, but it's definitely the streamlined word shouldn't apply. Okay, let's look at the next one, retro. It has definitely some retro, but it's more functional retro than say a retro car. Okay, let's look at this one, whimsical. I don't think this thing looks whimsical. It looks very, again, functional. Okay, next one, cool. It's cool, it's definitely pretty cool. So that could probably work, but I think this is not as cool as say looking at a Porsche 911 or a uh, streamlined sports car. It's a different type of cool, but you can sort of apply, it, I guess. All right. Animalistic, um, not really, right? It doesn't have characteristics like eyeballs and faces on it. So neither does the X-Wing, right? It doesn't come off as an animal. It comes off more as a jet, right? It's a functional thing. So because the lack of faces, okay? So the same thing, if you look at Cowboy Bebop, the words we use in Star Wars and supply, but we don't have to run through that. Let's uh, save some time here. So here are the references I chose for Cowboy Bebop, the new ship design for it. And we'll be using that for our sketch and let's look at Star Wars. So keywords for Star Wars, utility, sturdy, beautifully ugly, powerful, professional. So the first thing that comes to mind is let's get something powerful, big engines, right? So exposed engines. This is all utility, it's all sturdy, it's all powerful. So let's put that there. And then I start to look at forms that serve a purpose. So it's not just a form to look beautiful, but a form that comes with function. So for example, fins and flippers are part of that. They look nice as a shape, but at the same time, the reason why they look this way is due to function, right? So same thing with these blades uh, on CPU fans, right? So they also look cool, but they uh, have function behind it. So here's a couple more fins. And what I wanna do is I wanna gel these things all together to find my new spaceship design. Right? Look at these cars from the 70s, it's pretty wild, right? Uh, I know uh, Tesla came out with a crazy uh, uh, SUV that looks kind of wild, but wild shapes like this has been happening for a long, long time in automotive design. It's just that most of them never come out uh, into mass production. But the weird looking cars like this have ex existed for a long time. So uh, pretty crazy stuff. So anyways, these are two design boards I'll be using for our part the second part here, which we're gonna start sketching. So let me take a quick break here. Whoops, almost leaked that. Take a quick break and we'll look at the sketches that I produced, okay? All right, so now let's jump into the second phase, right? So now you have all your references, you understand the design language, now you gotta start sketching because in a real production time, you wanna spend maybe a few hours doing what I've just talked about now and then you wanna spend majority of the time designing and then also finishing design because the clients are not gonna pay you to do all these reference images. It's not the hardest thing to do, but if you spend all your time doing this, it's not gonna have any results, right? So I gotta try to get this done and move on to sketching. So let's show you the sketches I've done based on that. All right, so here's the first page. So I started with Cowboy Bebop. Uh, because the lines are a little more streamlined, it kind of it's kind of good to work warm up my hands drawing this because Star Wars stuff, because of the utility stuff, because of military looking stuff, we tend to have to control the perspective a bit. So for our Cowboy Bebop, it's a little bit more streamlined, so I started with that. And uh, you also use this sort of just warm up, okay? To get into a design mode, you really have to do this over and over. Something I, I think I've mentioned many times in design cinema, I'm seeing too many students just start with one sketch and just use that as your final. Design requires time, requires exploration. Remember the, uh, the thing I mentioned uh, in this slide, uh, I think here somewhere, let me see here. There we go, right? So we want to sketch, experiment, uh, try things and have fun. It's not just the first sketch you do, it's your final. Yeah, that would be too easy, you know, we wish our job was like that. But in the work, real work environment, you have to spend quite a bit of time finding that design, finding the shape that works. So let's go back to our sketches here. Doink. Okay, so I drew all these variations, keeping the five keywords in line, the streamlined, the cool, the retro, the whimsical, the animalistic, right? So all of these hopefully has some of that in there. And these sketches are not shown to clients, they're just for you, okay, so keep that in mind. So, I mean, I worked for a long time in the industry, so the sketches tend to look okay, but if you haven't worked in the industry for a long time, don't worry too much about the quality especially if you're gonna use 3D to finish it, in which case I will in this case as well. So if you're gonna have 3D to finish it, then your drawing really doesn't have to look that good. Don't stress out during this phase, something I mentioned numerous times in my past design cinema in car sketching, okay? You're gonna put, if you're gonna put all your energy doing a nice sketch, but the final is not for the client, 
then that energy shouldn't be spent here. You spend all your energy finding the design, finding the form, not making like a perfect perspective and so forth, right? So here, look at it. I'm just using the same uh, camera angle for everything. I'm not looking at extreme angles. I'm looking at back views. I'm not doing any of the things that are gonna be hard. Now, I even start with just side views. Side views are easy. From the side views, then draw a three quarter view. So all, it's all about just using all your energy, all your brain power to figure out the forms and design and not to challenge yourself with additional difficulties like a perfect drawing, a difficult perspective, a difficult camera angle, right? We wanna avoid all that. So off this page, you can see I only like one or two of them, right? I, I uh, marked those with a red dot. All of these, I sort of didn't like it. I just felt like they don't capture the five keywords that well, whereas the other two did. So let's do another one. All right, it's another page of Cowboy Bebop. So continuing with the uh, ball, so I used that sphere as my center design point because that was the uh, thing that was carried through in their uh, spaceships. So that start with the low sphere and just build those forms along that sphere, getting the accelerated lines, getting that uh, retro lines in there, getting the uh, all the curves in there, all right, look at here. So this is a top view, another way to design that makes it very easy so you don't have to worry about hard perspective, right? Sketching is all about, especially design sketching, it's all about finding the design and the sketch. So we see too many students trying to draw this so nice that they burn hours and hours just trying to fix a perspective. But that's not important because nowadays so much concept art will be finished in 3D and the 3D will do the perspective for you. So, but you cannot start a 3D if you don't have a good design to start with, okay? So let's do another page. Here's another page in which I'm starting to explore with the orientation. And there are some stuff here I like, like uh, these two down here, I sort of like. Uh, they, they have a hum hummingbird vibe to it. They have a little bit of animal look to it. And they also have some interesting designs, right? So so look, it took a lot. And this was done, you know, this is not a real project for me. So I have to do this on and off through my, uh, when I'm working on a real job. So I think in total, I spent about a morning's time, I'm guessing about two hours maybe to do all these thumbnails, the Star Wars ones as well. So imagine the real job, then I have a whole day, maybe even two days to do this. I should be able to find a pretty good design within that time period, right? So, all right, so that's Cowboy Bebop. Now let's move to Star Wars. What this episode is about, our Star Wars special. So I started here on the, on the upper left corner and you can see right away, it was, well, right away I went to generic world. This is not talking about the Terran ships. This to me is not Star Wars. This is generic spaceship. This is something that belongs to a bunch of video games, for example, like generic spaceship video games tend to have this kind of stuff, like a generic cockpit, generic engines on both sides. This doesn't necessarily scream Star Wars. It just says generic sci-fi spaceship. But it's a good warm-up spot. I drew it, warmed my hands up, kind of starting to get the language across, but some things here don't work. For example, some of these lines are too streamlined that doesn't fall into the words I chose as one of my five key words, right? A tool, a utility, right? It's, uh, it's powerful, it's, uh, it's professional. This starts to have some playfulness to it, right? This line here, this line here, this one as well. It's starting to have this line, you see that? Similar to the Cowboy Bebop. And the reason why it has this line is because I just did the Cowboy Bebop one prior to this. So some of the design language coming off the Cowboy Bebop ship was influencing my Star Wars ship. But doesn't mean that it's bad, you just have to get that out of the way, okay? As soon as I recognize that this is generic, I told my brain, okay, don't do that, okay? Let's mess with the big, uh, uh, remember the word beautifully ugly, okay? So the third one I did was right here. I go, let's just draw a crazy long nose, just see where it gets me, right? Just to break up that generic Terran proportion, like this is a Terran spaceship proportion. Break it up. So I immediately drew a long nose, but it doesn't look so good, but at least it's starting to get my, my mind around Star Wars, uh, visuals right put a couple of uh, big giant engines on it when we talked about that and i wanted to avoid this engine as well like this engine here this form is a design form so that also makes the thing look too generic right same thing with this one here with this kind of v-shaped engine uh, i want to get rid of all this this is all 45 degree angle spaceship design right this kind of stuff right 45 degree angles this tend to get you into generic spaceships really, really quickly when designing off of 45s. So let's get to here. Then I did this one here. This one I kind of liked, but somehow it didn't say Star Wars, but I kind of liked it. That's why I chose it. You can see here the red marker, All right? So it kind of reminds me of like a baby blockade runner or something like that, but I kind of kept it there, but this thing is not good. Whatever is on the bottom here. This is too, uh, too sci-fi looking. So, but let's keep going here. 
And now I start to work the fins in there, right? This one looks Terran as well, I didn't like it. And now I'm starting to get something I like, okay? I actually worked this way. If you wanna see how I sketched these, it kinda of came out this way, like this. Okay, that's the evolution of this page, something like this. So when I drew this guy here based on the fins, right? Remember the references we looked at earlier with the, um, the diver's uh, fins? When I drew this, something happened, right? I go, okay, there's something interesting going on here. Uh, with the vertical fin, but the forms here are too whimsical and too streamlined. See this, the curve going down here, that's not Star Wars-y. This is a little bit more too, re this is too refined, okay? It's starting to become beautiful looking. We don't want the beautiful, we want to be ugly, functional, so I'm gonna avoid that line right here. But I wanna retain this kind of fin motif and see if I could use that in my design. So you can see I start to explore with that, like, okay, what if I do it this way? Eh, maybe, you know, uh, this one, by the turn, I, I really don't like this one. I don't know why I drew it. <laughs> it looks like one of those generic spaceships again. So I don't know why. It's, it's not Star Wars. Get rid of that. And then, boom, I got this one. Yeah, this right, I start to feel like, okay, this looks like a Star Wars ship now. It's got funky proportions. It's kind of beautiful, but at the same time, it's kind of ugly. And the function is, it's got this huge can in the front. And we kind of pretend that maybe these huge blades displace the, the heat or whatever it's doing. But it's got a funky fin. And to make the pilot see out of it, maybe we'll do a dual pilot, which we have seen in the Star Wars. They used these dual cockpit designs before on the Cloud City. Right? We saw some, some of those escort fighters. So maybe use that motif, put a giant engine on the bottom. And this proportion to me start to look functional. It's starting to look beautifully ugly. It looks powerful. It looks, uh, what other terms we found? We have it up here. Let me just remind ourselves here. We wanna go back to this page here, right? So it's sturdy, it's utility, it's beautifully ugly, it's powerful, it's professional. Okay, so those are the words we're trying to look for. And I felt like this design here is starting to do that, okay? So using that, I start to explore down this avenue of design language, as you can see here, okay? So using the fin, notice the sketches are getting cleaner and cleaner, okay? The first sketch was a Cowboy Bebop. This is the first sketch. Notice it's kind of messy, kind of loose, right? But as your muscles warm up, as your brain starts to wake up, as the caffeine uh, starts to inject into your body, uh, the discipline, line discipline gets better. You can see the lines get a little cleaner. And that's why I save the Star Wars stuff second. The Cowboy Bebop stuff, because it's flowy, it fits the working condition I was in when I started around 10 in the morning. So by now, I'm probably, this is a 10, one hour later, probably 11. I'm getting to Star Wars now. So now I need line control. I need to make sure the perspective is somewhat okay. But again, if you're a student, don't worry about it too much. But uh, when, I was, when I was sketching this, I kind of, I mean, I've been in this business long enough to know where my comfort zone is in terms of sketching, like when I'm warmed up to do difficult drawings. And I knew the Star Wars one was a little hard to draw. So um, so by the time I got to here, you can see the line quality is a little bit better than the, the, the first ones here, which kind of looks kind of messy. Okay, but the messy one works for the Cowboy Bebop. Okay, so anyways, let's go back here. So we're exploring the fin look, right? So here's a big fin. The selling point is that it's carrying a gun. Remember functional, it only does one thing. This thing here will not be a good fighter. It's probably meant to jump through light speed, fire its weapon, and get the hat out of there, right? This thing being chased by TIE fighters is gonna be dead. So it's a functional uh, design, okay? Drop his, drop his huge laser rifle, whatever it's firing, and boom, we're out of there. So who knows what this fin does, but whatever it is, the point of it is to create this iconic shape that break it away from the X wings and the Y wings. So when they're in formation, we could recognize them from very far away. And again, that to me, that's a Star Wars thing, you know, the, the, the iconicness of these ships. So I explored that. Then I went back to kind of explore the, uh, the sketch from the previous page, but I still didn't like it. I want to see what if I put a little bit of a curve in it, but I still didn't like this. This doesn't look Star Wars to me. This starting to look maybe Babylon 5 or something to that degree. Uh, so uh, what's the other one the, on the sci-fi channel? I can't remember. Uh, anyways, the one that's like Space Cowboy one. But it's starting to feel like it's not Star Wars. So then I go, okay, what if I take that away and make it more functional? And that's why I came to this one, okay? So I made the cockpit more like the original 1970s cockpit with a droid unit here. And then instead of having a curve, we make it more functional, like just a bunch of gibberish. Maybe, and that's why I marked this one as a possible uh, selection for the uh, to make it into a final. And then kept on going off the wing. So we got this one, we got this one here, right? So you can see the put the copy on, on one side and have the gun in the middle, possible, right? And then I start to explore even more. I went back to on the upper left here and just start to put the cockpit in the middle. 
Now this is going to create a visual in, uh, thing of blockage for the pilot, but I thought it's kind of cool because a lot of World War II planes have this issue as well in which visibility is not the best, especially when they're not in, the, in certain type of alignments. So in this case, since they're firing a gun, I think the purpose of this craft is just to line themselves up with a target. They can sort of see down the middle and just shoot and get out of there. So their whole function is to fire this gun. And that's why we have the other version from the previous page in which maybe this one, we separate the cockpits. So at least they have a better frontal uh, view visuals. Okay, uh, But sometimes I think things like this is kind of fun to create a, um, a design that has a little bit of a, this non-functional thing in front to make the job of the pilot even harder. And the reason why you got that in World War II is because remember, they had sometimes month to develop a new fighter or a new bomber. They have to make this go into action immediately. So some stuff, you know, goes from blueprint to final production in a matter of six months, sometimes even faster than that. So some of these craft will have difficulties for the operators. Uh, for example, you go into some of these fighters like uh, P-47, once on the ground, you can't even see out of the cockpit because the, uh, the angle of the plane is such dramatic that you can't see the runway. So that's why these World War II planes zigzag on the runway, right? Because they can't see in front of them. So those are things that was, uh, was as a design thing that they cannot bypass at the time. So anyways, I thought Star Wars have that kind of feel as well. They're so functional that lousy functions will make the pilot deal with the difficulties, right? So uh, same thing with the moon landers, right? When they first land on the moon, that thing was really crazy to operate due to the difficulty of function. Anyways, let's not get off course here. So I like where this is going. So at this point, I think I have one more. Yeah, this is my last sketch. So I did three pages of Cowboy Bebop. So one, two, three. And I did two pages of Star Wars. You don't have to do tons, okay? Once you find the design that you like, oops, Star Wars. Okay. Once you find design like, you can stop it. If you find that a second sketch, if you happen to find it, okay, you can use it. But my advice is don't just do one or two because you want to warm up your brain. You want to explore a little bit. So in general, at least have a page or two of designs. But you also don't have to overdo it. Some students tend to overdo this. Like, okay, once they have a design, they're just doing derivatives. By the fourth, fifth, sixth page, they're just doing a small variation off their second page. At that point, there's nothing to do because remember, this is pre-pro, pre-production. That means we want to get this form approved first. Once we get this approved, then we do variations, right? So for example, we get this spaceship here approved by the director or the art director, whoever your client is. Once they approve it, this overall direction is good. Okay, then we can mess with the engine being round. We can move this thing down, up, whatever, right? So if you're just doing variations as your exploration and not finding new shapes, that is kind of useless at doing this phase. And that's what a lot of students do. For example, to design a character and it's the same character, but spread across three pages with different kinds of details on them. At this point, that detail doesn't matter because maybe this character as a whole will not get approved, right? Same thing with the structure or a vehicle. You want the overall form to be approved before you do variations. That's why I look at this page, every single form is different, right? So every form here is different. They're not just minor variations. They're big form structure moves. So we want to find that, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So, because some of you might look at this and go, hey, aren't these variations? Variations, what I'm talking about is this. Let's just take uh, this ship as an example, right? Let's draw on top. Take that, right? Variations like, okay, we'll put another fin. Oops, that's not, the color's not right. We'll put another fin here. That's one more. And then the next drawing is we put a fin over here, okay? Okay, that's one more. Next one, we'll put a uh, thing over here. That's one more. That's what a lot of students tend to do when they run out of things to think about. So their fourth, fifth, sixth page of the thumbnails are generally just the same thing with some details added. That's unnecessary during this phase of design, okay? We want this kind of variation. This ship is a complete different language than this ship. Okay, after you got that, you wanna narrow this down to your final, okay? Which let's look at the original page here, All right? Once you sketch, experiment, try things, have fun, you wanna pick your favorite designs and finalize them. So I picked, uh, which one did I pick here? All right, so for Cowboy Bebop, I picked these two uh, designs here. And for Star Wars, I pick this one. Look at this, the line quality. <laughs> this one's all sketchy. I cleaned up a tiny bit. Uh, and then this one is a little bit better because the, the, by now, this is about noon. So at two hours, muscles all warmed up, better line quality. So I like these. I think these, to me, feel Star Wars-y. They're funky, weird, bizarre, seems to be functional. 
And those are the four designs we'll try to take to final. Okay, oops, showed you a sneak peek there. Let me take a quick break and we'll come back and show you the final designs. All right, we're back here and now I'm gonna show you guys the finals for these. So this stuff here, all these sketches, remember the clients don't see these, right? They're just for yourself to find the form to develop. Okay, once you have that, nowadays we do everything pretty much in 3D, especially for something like a spaceship. It's so much easier to do this in 3D than to draw it out because you have the perfect perspective when it comes to it. So I'll show you the first one here. Okay, so here is uh, Spike's Swordfish 2 that I decided to do. So it seems like a more streamlined version of the current one it has, but it's not the same ship. And uh, we'll see, right? So if you work in a company, imagine you pitch this uh, two, three days from the first day you started. I think this at least will make the clients feel like you understand their IP, that this is not a Star Wars spaceship or some random Terran spaceship. It is something that belongs to their IP. So I kind of like this guy. I really like the back view here. It looks super whimsical. It looks super uh, fast and speedy and maneuverable. Like this thing looks like it could just be turning in, uh, you know, do these kind of crazy 360s. Uh, it's meant to do that. And I think that captures the uh, the spikes attitude and spaceships quite well. So, right? so this is the first one. So this is all built in 3D. So the 3D, I had one of my uh, 3D guys build it. I've been working with him. His name is Ray. So be, I've been working for almost three years now. So he understands my design language really, really fast. So, or he understands what, uh, how to capture design language. So I use uh, Ray for a lot of my 3D building because it's very fast. He built this in about a day. So uh, it's very fast, give him a sketch, comes back, but it's not built to high level, it's kind of rough. And what I do is in Photoshop, I just painting all the difficult stuff, right? Like the little details and so forth, just paint it in because it's much faster. So here's the first Cowboy Bebop. I just call it the Swordfish 3, okay? So I'll put all this on, uh, on a block somewhere so you guys can take a closer look, all right? So with that, I did a, uh, a more beefier version all right, here's a beefier version. I sort of don't like this one. It looks kind of weird, but I uh, just put it here just to show you because not every design is going to be successful, but sometimes you have to go through it and see if it works, right? So this is the uh, second version of this ship. Of the two, I still prefer the smaller one. I think this one's pretty cool, right? It sort of feels like a Cowboy Bebop thing. It feels like an upgrade to this Swordfish 3. It's more modernized, but still has the original retro look. So I retained some of the forms from the original Swordfish a little bit. Uh, for example, the nose shape, let me get a different pin here, All right? The nose shape is here. Here's the retro lights I talked about earlier. They're putting here, you can see here, these are retro lights there, All right? We retained his uh, gun here, the gun platform, a huge weapon. Here's a nice aggressive front view showing that gun. It's animalistic. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Let's go through the uh, the key words, right? The five words for this was, I think, streamlined. So we have a lot of accelerated car curves, especially look at the back view here. That's a very streamlined design here. It's a whimsical, yes, it looks whimsical, it looks playful. It is retro, right? So it has retro all these. Uh, what are the other words here to remind ourselves? Cowboy Bebop is uh, this one, okay. Tweak. All right, streamlined, yes, retro, whimsical. We talked about that, is it cool? I think so, and it's animalistic. So I think my designs here captures those things, right? Animalistic, whimsical. This this view looks like a little crab, actually. Um, but this view looks like a some kind of insect or bird of some type, and uh, that does fit into what we want to do. Okay, let's look at the next one here. All right, so this is a bigger version, same thing. Uh, animalistic, uh, streamlined, okay, whimsical. All right, let's jump into our, let me get another pin here, jump into our Star Wars ships. Then since we talked the Star Wars special, we gotta do our Star Wars ships. All right, so here's the single cockpit variation of the Starfighter. Um, I thought this kind of looks pretty cool. I think to me, at least, it speaks to Star Wars language. It looks like something that belongs to their world. Um, it's funky, it's got this huge iconic uh, fin. Here's a side profile of what this looks like. All right, let me draw on here. All right, so we've got the main cockpit here, we have the droid unit back here, got this huge engine, right? Remember, it's functional. So this huge engine comes out at light speed, pushes craft straight through everybody, line up the target, fire this huge cannon, and turn around and get out of there. That's all this does. Maybe it's to break down the Imperial Force Shield or whatever they have on their spaceships, and that's all it does. This thing will not dogfight very well because it does look like it's very maneuverable. All right, here's a shot of it coming out of light speed. It's like boom at an angle. Line up that gun, shoot it, and we're out of there, right? So you can tell, I love this stuff, man. You know, I, how many years is this? Like 24 years now I've been drawing, designing, 
And I still love this stuff to death. I'm a kid when it comes to this. And I, I'm making all these noises and playing, and playing all these scenarios in my head because you gotta keep that in your mind. This is why we're doing this, right? We are all kids in our hearts. So when you're designing, you gotta have fun with this. So when I was doing this, I was making all sorts of noises and coming all these scenarios of uh, what this thing could do when it comes out light speed and uh, attacking the uh, Imperial cruisers and so forth, yeah? So yeah, so that's the uh, first one. I did a detailed spec shot of this one. So here's another view of it. So here's sort of a three-quarter down view of the cockpit, uh, as well as this um, gun platform with a large fin. So you can see this spaceship is very uh, thin in profile. So this is a top view of it. Very, very thin, and that's not on purpose. So if this thing comes out of light speed on a front view, you can almost not see it. So it comes in like a little tiny blade, like a knife. Uh, it will shoot its guns and then boom, get out of here. So its side view is very easy to spot, right? The side view is here, right? But that's not how the enemy should see this craft. The enemy will see a front view uh, in which it has a very invisible profile, right? And that's part of the design language, like right? being that it's functional, okay? So this thing will not work in any other case. That's part of the functional thing, right? Like a screwdriver what doesn't work as a wrench. And that's what this thing is. This thing is just one thing. Fires that gun, it's out of there. You want, you want to capture it and do a dogfight with it, it's going to be pretty difficult for this thing to uh, de deal with that kind of scenario, right? So here's sort of a down angle shot. Uh, if you're to uh, climb in, it would be like a ladder. So by the way, this thing, how it lands, I have no idea. But when we're designing Star Wars ships, we all sort of figure out that later. So, I mean, if I go back to the previous one, we can always make a make some kind of way for it to land, okay? Land is something that we always design later. When, at least when I was at Skywalker Ranch, we figured out later. But if this thing was to land, I think what I'll do is I'll probably make the legs come out from the engines maybe, like here, maybe something like this, maybe like that. This is a little too low, but I think it would be something like that. Another way to deal with it is to make a thing come out from, oops, wrong layer, what layer am I on? Bonk. Is to make it come out from here, and do something ridiculous like this, maybe. I don't know, but that's something to worry about later. So landing Star, uh, Star Wars ships is always uh, something you worry about later. Get the form first and then figure out how it lands. Okay, so here's that. All right, let's take a look at the uh, the final one here, the twin pot. So I really like the way this looks, okay, the twin pot. When I drew it, something uh, in, in me told me that this will block, look pretty cool, right? As a design, Sometimes you have these designs, just feel it that it's going to be kind of neat uh, when you develop it to final. So here's my twin uh, seat Starfighter, right? Same purpose, but this one carries a much, much bigger gun. So uh, due to that, maybe it has more mechanism in the middle. And to control that, they cannot put the cockpit in the middle. So they put two cockpits on either side. Uh, so navigator and uh, gunner probably, or pilot and gunner, uh, engine on the bottom. The only thing I don't like about this one, Possibly could be the engine. I think this will probably look better with a round engine, but that's what I say variation The purpose of these designs here is to get the client to buy off on this concept of this kind of blade gun design thingy That's here once they buy this off now We could do as many variations as you want because the hardest part is done. Okay, so uh, anyway So the joy unit got a you know, the uh, little R R2 or whatever R4 unit uh, back here and we've got a two cockpits on left and right so in the Star Wars ship I always like that they're all damaged and scratched up and all this kind of crazy stuff that goes that happens to them uh, I've got another view of it boom here's another view of that so here's a three-quarter back view you can see the two cockpits the joints in the middle um, huge fin here's sort of a cool angle right when it comes out light speed this is what the enemy pretty much sees before it gets shot at so it comes out light speed boom this perspective is extreme perspective like this right comes out light speed Ready that weapon, pew, whoops, fires that gun and turns around and out of there. All right, here's a profile. So much uh, girthier than their previous uh, single C fighter. So let's look at the keywords, right? Forgot about that. Star Wars keywords. Utility, sturdy, beautifully ugly, powerful, professional. And hopefully these crafts for Star Wars fits those five key terms. So if you're practicing at home, right? Give that a try. Put those five keywords on the wall or on Photoshop. And as you, as you design, be really honest with yourself and see, do those words apply to your designs, right? If you're doing something very generic, then you're probably missing the point of what this episode is about. So pick an IP. For example, pick Star Wars. Pick the 1977 Star Wars or pick uh, Cowboy Bebop or pick whatever IP you like 
and give it a try to design into that IP. Um, yeah, so that's what this episode is all about. So now your job is to start designing. So anyway, so Christmas break is coming up. You guys have, I'm guessing, at least five to seven days off. Use that time wisely. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Give it a try. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in year 2020. Uh, let me know in the comments section if you find episodes like this more interesting. So for those who are just watching now, what I've been doing the last few episodes is really going back to basics. Uh, treating design cinema almost like a classroom. So you can follow me along as I discuss whatever topic that we're doing for that episode. So a lot more longer uh, time stretch, but hopefully it's helping some of you guys out there. All right, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys in episode 104 in 2020. Happy New Year's and happy 2020. I'll see you guys in the next episode. This is Feng Zhu signing off. Bye-bye.